The yield on the 30 year Treasury coming off its record low, now back above 2%. What to make of all of this? Payne Capital Management President Brian Payne. Brian, good to see you. How do you position your portfolio in this environment? And are you positive still on the stock market despite the volatility that we've seen? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm wildly optimistic on the stock market if I was to uh, be so bold. Um, wildly? Wildly, yes. Bring it. Let's bring it. Let's bring it. So I think uh, what's happening right now is, well, first off, fundamentals really just haven't changed, right? And we still have low unemployment. We know GDP is coming in better than expected. In fact, consensuses are going up again for GDP. Um, the consumer is in phenomenal shape. We saw earnings yesterday. Walmart had great earnings. So I think in, you know, from that perspective, uh, the U.S. economy should stay strong here. But the other thing that kind of concerns me a little bit is there's just so much money going to the bond market right now, and bond prices are getting to a point where, you know, how much higher can they really go here? That, that's a great point. James McIntosh in the Wall Street Journal today has an article, Forget Stocks, the Ultra-Long Bonds Are the Real Gamble. Yes. Buying bonds at such a stupidly high price is not a way to keep your investment safe. It is speculation. And I don't think that that's something that gets said enough. I mean, stupidly high. I love that line. Um, and I think you have to look at where retail investors are putting their money, and it's always dangerous where retail investors are putting their money. I mean, you're seeing like almost $500 billion go into bond funds this year. And to your point, I mean, rates are just abysmal at this point. That's got to be a problem at some point down the line. How much do you think is coming from international investors coming to the U.S. market buying bonds? I mean, how much of this bond buying is us? How much of it is coming from overseas? Because even though our rates are low, they're pretty much lower everywhere else. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it's probably international. I think a lot of those retail flows are probably domestic right now because you're also seeing foreigners, you know, you also have currency risk when you put money into the U.S. market or put into the U.S. dollar at some point. Maybe the dollar is going to weaken. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, so I would think more of its domestic demand is specifically in those bond funds. Um, but I also, you know, obviously, you know, rates are low for a reason, and that's because a lot of people around the world are putting their money into the U.S. dollar, and that's keeping it strong relative. Right. Okay. Are we seeing uh, what's the result of this China trade uh, si situation? Uh, not as much, uh, not as much about you know. Obviously, we're in a trade war with China. Not about prices for the consumer, but I'm talking about markets. You, it, people are starting to flood money into this country, uh, and President Trump talked about this the other day. It, it, will that continue, and can that continue and help us actually push through this China trade war? Um, I actually think money should start to leave this country. I mean, it's, you know, it's too high. The dollar's too high, which that puts, in, that's, that puts some pressure on the manufacturing right now. Um, so I think at some point you have to look at the value around the world. I talk a lot about buying things like Europe, which nobody likes to talk about because it's the most unpopular thing to do. But right now on European stocks, you're getting like 5%, 6% yields. Meanwhile, you're getting negative yields on the bonds. And valuations are just so, so cheap across you know, the globe right now that I think you have to see money start to flow around the world. And I think at some point that has to happen. And we've seen consumer confidence hasn't taken too much of a hit yet still high could there be a situation where with all the talk of recession is looming it's going to happen from the media that people could kind of t talk themselves out of consumer confidence we could see those levels start to dip that's actually a an, that's actually yeah. an economic phenomenon that economists have studied for years and years and years about the self fulfill it, it works yeah. for inflation but also potentially recessions well, I think we're seeing the opposite. I mean, the, the news has been very, very negative all year, right? All economists that you've heard have been very, very negative on where the economy is going to go. Analysts have been very negative on their earnings outlooks. Meanwhile, you know, if you look at the consumer right now, they're just in phenomenal shape. And, you know, I would even add they're just not leveraged like they were back in 2007. No, we've been we saving in this country for the last couple of years. Yeah, and Americans just don't do that. So I think right we now. We do now, baby. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> but just really quickly, we talked about about this, about the speculation in longer term debt. You have negative yields on what's $16 trillion in, in, around the globe in debt, and negative yields in Germany, Japan, um, Britain, and the like. And what happens is it is hot potato that people are buying this debt because it doesn't make sense it, from a, a 30,000 feet that why would you lend money to a country if you have to pay pay for the privilege of lending money yes. but again it's I'm going to just sell the debt at some point because they think that it's going to continue to rally and that yields are going to continue to get more and more negative yeah, I love the hot potato analogy because that's really what it is. It's kind of like we're musical chairs, right? At some point, the music's going to stop, um, and there's just a lot of retail money holding these bonds, and it's just not going to end pretty. And I, by the way, I should correct myself. I don't think that it's Japan and Britain are not quite negative, but they're pretty doggone close. Ryan, yeah, thank you so much. Ryan Payne, good to see you.